Hi, Wist and Xano have finally introduced real-time functionality, and thanks to Wist's Vue.js-based reactivity and Xano finally picking up the pace in delivering real-time functionality with their first part being database triggers, we can do cool stuff like this. So I have my Xano uh, uh, database table right here, and the moment I'm updating this field and hitting enter, keep an eye of what's happening right here in WIS. I'm going to click enter and we're going to update the text in WIS in real time. And we're not going to do any polling. As you can see, this request here is only um, firing when I update my field in Xano. So you don't have any background API requests going on and making everything slow. This is a super efficient way using WebSockets, the future of the way we're going to communicate um, inside of WIST fully natively. And this is amazing. So WIST has the, fun the capability to do that with their reactivity layer that thanks to Alex we, we have with the Vue.js uh, uh, Vue interactivity components. So we can do listen for those changes. Now, Xano didn't have the capacity to tell Wiz there is a change until now. We finally have that. We have it 50%. Some things are still missing. So we're going to use a service called Ably in this video, which, by the way, is free for up to a million monthly messages. So there is a good chance that this is a free feature for you um, to help Xano a little bit until they have that finish in another year. Um, but let's get started right now. So in my Xano database, I just have those fields and I, you know, I can update them. But if you go on the three dots up here and go to triggers, you see you can create database triggers, and this is what we're using. This is the first piece of Xano's real-time functionality. This is super exciting. So we're going to call Ably's API in whenever something changes with that, you know, with that data, and then I'm going to pass my channel name. Now, you don't need to know what the channel name is yet. I just want you to know we're going to send this to a specific channel that is based on for example, my user ID right here that is stored inside of a variable in WIST. Think of it like this. When a specific user, let's say uh, Joe, is logged in on this application and he is receiving all that messages, right? We only want to send the messages that are for Joe to Joe. We don't want to send them to Nelson or to Annoy or to Alex or somebody else, right? So this is why this is already set up. Now, in this example, it wouldn't really matter because it's hard-coded anyway, but it does matter when you're sending individual messages only to specific users and not updating general website-specific information. So let's go back. We have that ID. So when we initialize Ably's SDK in WIST with this ID and then send it in the in the request to this ID, we're going to receive real-time data, as you can see right here in our WIST front end. So let's go back. And I'm just calling this name update. And this is up to you. We can also pass on the data using the JSON new object, which I would not do for security reasons. Because let's say the user is not authenticated to my website, but still manages to subscribe to the web socket, that user could get information that is not for that user. So you could implement true real-time functionality, sending the new data directly to WIST, but the way I'm doing it is, this is why it's not fully real-time, it's like a little, like a millisecond behind, but if I'm updating this, I'm going to notify WIST using a WebSocket, and then I'm going to call that request again that is associated to it. But you could send that data in it directly too, if you want it instant, but I just want to make sure the user is authenticated, the right data gets to the right user, and it is a more secure matter. Now, 
when Xano introduces their native functionality for it, of course it will be, you know, you can do it secure that other way. But since it is not fully out there yet, I want to make sure that I'm doing best practices in terms of a security level when I deal with user-specific data in this example here. So we're going to say just new data available. You can call this whatever you want. So then we do authentication and you ideally want to store your API key as an environment variable to have that protected. But you know, in this case, I just showed you my API key. <laughs> but this is basically it. So whenever this data changes, we want to call Ably to uh, reload that. So now, you know, how is our backend communicating with the front end? Because normally we have the front end saying, hey, backend, here you go. <laughs> Now, how is this happening the other way around? Thanks to WebSockets. So, Ably enables us to use WebSockets. And WebSockets are, let's actually Google WebSockets. Um, so, and I'm going to go to my WIS project. <laughs> let's go to WebSockets on Google. And as you can see, the WebSocket API is an advanced technology that makes it possible um, to open a two-way interactive communication session between the user's browser and a server. If you go to this, you see that the client and the server can communicate thanks, they can communicate with, um, with um, HTTP. This can send that here and it can be sent back. But with WebSockets, you have, you know, a one-to-one -one communication. And this is why we have this real-time functionality. You see, like normally, this sends it here and this sends it back. With WebSocket, it is one process between sending and receiving. So the way we're going to initiate that is using a WIS computed variable. So you want to sign up for your Ably account, get your API key, and we're going to use on the front end the subscribe API key. So this is the client-side API key. This channel, metadata, et cetera API key is the one that you're going to use on your Xano backend. Um, this is what you will be using on the backend to, to do the HTTP request. So, you know, the API request in Xano. But let's copy that, this one down here, the client-side one that is only subscribe. And we're going to do the setup in here. We're going to do const Ably and I should have mentioned that in your Webflow project, you want to add Ably's JavaScript library in the body of your page as well. So I'm going to write const Ably equals new Ably in caps dot real time or in caps. And then I'm going to add my, um, my API key, my public one. I'm going to do const channel. We're going to define the channel Ably dot channels dot get and then here we go. This is our variable containing our user ID. Now, why do we have to create a channel? Shouldn't we just create a channel every time a message is sent? No, because Ably is charging you by channels. So the smartest thing you can do is create one channel for one user. Now, in this case, we have the user hard coded, but you want to create one channel per user. So whenever that user gets a new notification, we just reload their data. Um, and this is the easiest way to do that. So that channel will be linked to the user ID. That way, in your backend, when Michael, for example, gets a, a notification from Lisa, um, we have Michael's ID and we can then call, you know, Michael's ID, Michael's channel ID is Michael's user ID. So that way, if we set the channel ID as the user ID that we already use in our database or member stack to identify the user, we have an easier way of communicating live time. Uh, real time, not live time. It's live real time. So think of it like this. The user ID is one, two, three, four, five. Now, if the channel ID for that user is one, two, three, four, five, two, we just, you know, we just send one, two, three, four, five to Ably and that user will, will receive that data to the subscribe, uh, to the devices he or she is subscribed on. And this is why we have the user ID as uh, the channel ID. We define that for this channel. And then we are going to do channel.unsubscribe as a function before we subscribe to the channel. Why? 
because if the user has an old channel and logs it again, that user would subscribe multiple times as the same channel, which we don't want. So in case there is an old subscription, we want to wipe that out. And then we want to do channel.subscribe as a function. And then we're going to create a new, uh, so we're going to subscribe to the channel. And then we're going to listen in this function for messages in the channel. And whenever we receive the message, due to the approach we're taking here with reloading the data in WIST to have it more secure and to also potentially make use of WIST secrets, you know, that's a feature they give you. Uh, you don't have to pay for WIST secrets, so let's use it. Um, we're just going to set a variable, which, you know, this variable will be initially false, which will be reload underscore data. We will set this variable to true. And every time this variable is true, we are going to reload that data. Let me illustrate that to you. Let's go to this variable. And when I'm going to update this field here, you will see that this will be true for a second, that data will reload, it will update, and then it will be set to false again. This is how we're going to enable real-time communication between WIST and uh, Xano. So let's get back to WIST here. And, you know, we're going to set that in here. So now what we need to do is, first of all, on page load, we want to load that data. So I just have a very primitive um, endpoint here just to get the first record. So I have this endpoint. This is just a normal get endpoint to get this first row in my database here. So I have my application in WIST set up for my Xano group URL. And I have my request in here to call my group URL and to call the endpoint real time slash the record ID. This is AE2 and AE2. You know, I'm just getting the first record. And as you can see, if I load this request, I'm always getting the first record. This one will get that. But now the important thing is when will I be getting the first record, you know, because in this example, I'm always getting the first record if something changes. So the communication really is the beauty that is happening here. So let's dig more into the details. So now on page load, of course, we need to get that data initially. So I have get initial API data on page load. So when page starts loading, I will perform the request for real time, which is the request that will just, you know, uh, render this data here. And now I just have, you know, this text here. I'm going to set text, plain text, and I'm going to, uh, you know, just going to return the value here with that text from the um, HTTP response I'm getting back. And then I have another action, and this is where the beauty happens. Reload data when WebSocket is sent. So every time because if we go to our computed variables, we know whenever we receive a message, and we saw this update earlier, let me do this again. So whenever I update this in here, keep an eye on the v.reload underscore data. If I'm going to update this, it will be true and then false. So every time this is true for a split second, because that means we received the message, we want to do something. So when this is true, so we're going to create an event-based action for when we receive the webhook data. Um, and the condition will be v.reload underscore data equals 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 true. Now the cool thing is in WIST embed 2, since this enables um, us to use uh, Vue.js um, interactivity components for full reactivity throughout the application, and we don't have to worry about that because WIST is doing the magic for us, we can just have this like an event listener listen for every time this dependency changes. So this is all we have to do. This, in a sense, is also real-time functionality in inside of WIST, if you want to call it that way. And I'm going to risk to have some comments here saying me I would be providing false information with that, but I'll, I'll take it. Uh, so we have that custom condition here. And when that custom condition is met, meaning the moment this is set to true, when we receive the webhook, we want to perform the request of real time. So now, you know, we go in here, 
this updates. Let me add a second smiley. Joe deserves it. Here you go. A second smiley. And then we see it was true. And let's add a third smiley here. Look at that. We see that was true. And now, because we still, if this would be true and it wouldn't reset to false, it will not, uh, you know, it will not um, get triggered again when I update anything. So in order to still have this updatable at the end of this request and don't have this over it because WIST executes those in chronological order, I want to do a run function or you could even set variable. That would be even easier. I could do like set variable, take that variable. I'm going to write return uh, false. Here you go. So then when I will receive, you know, it will be updated. We will reload that request and then we go to the variable v dot reload underscore data and after everything happened we're just going to set this again to false so that we can set it again when new data comes to true to then update it to set it again to false to then be able when it receives new data new data to be then be set to true and so on and so forth and to have this go on in an endless cycle so as you can see Let's reload that page because now we even have less code since we use set um, variable inside of WIST. Let's go to inspect and uh, let's get rid of this one. Perfect. So now when I add another smiley in here, you will see that it is was true for a split second. Now it's false again. That data updated in real time. And if I remove a smiley, just like that, you see, since it was false again, we had the possibility to set it to true it got updated because of that. We redid the request and then it is false again. So, you know, I can uh, set this again and, you know, this continues uh, for an eternity. And this is how you're going to create real-time functionality for your WIST and Webflow application. And I think this is really cool. And, uh, you know, let me give you a message. Let me do thanks for watching. What? Ching. Oh. Here you go. Now, the question we've all been waiting for is, can I add a smiley in here? Let's see. Is there a smiley? No, there's no smiley. <laughs> so, let's go old school. Uh, here you go. Oh, it's cut off, but uh, I think there was a smiley. It was just cut off. Okay, so now... I want to try it again. <laughs> Let's see. I want to have fun with this. Let's add a smiley. Oh. It got a smiley. Look at that. We can even... Who would have thought that you can send smileys in real time to WIST? And I think that's a good sentence to end this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your support. I really appreciate that. And let me know what you're going to build with real time inside of your WIST and Webflow web application. Thank you so much for watching and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.